Hey guys, I want to share with you a few things here so that we um, might um, get some information out to you a little bit better than email, sometimes a little less personal, um, but also would uh, give you an opportunity to gain some information at your convenience. Uh, I want to share a few things with you because my goal is always share everything that I know with you so that you're as informed as I am. And to steal that phrase, that become real popular so you'll know what I know. That was for you, Melanie. And uh, I want to share with you our update on a behavioral therapist position it has been approved at the division level. I haven't heard any feedback from uh, Highlands Community Services when we're looking at doing that. But I did do a visit at Anderson Elementary recently and, and looked at how they're using their behavior interventions position. I was really impressed. So I want to be able to share that information when we do get a behavioral therapist on board. So we're looking at trying to find some spacing around the building for some upcoming programs that we're trying to get because our kids are so needy and uh, they're coming to us with more and more issues that develop into behavioral issues. And I think a lot of that becomes because we have the ACEs that we're learning about through the documentary Resilience uh, that we listened to a couple of weeks ago and then the follow up information from Highlands Community Services uh, about the PD. And I think we continue to have those conversations because kids are coming to us with more issues, more trauma. We're recognizing that more so because that makes a different child. And if we can learn why and how that's occurring, it helps us develop the empathy that those kids need so that we can learn them a little bit better and teach them differently. We can't teach the way we did 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and sometimes even less than that. A year or two ago, we're getting a different child now than we had even a year or two ago. So we really have to think differently. And I think the PD we've had recently really helps us to develop a mindset and a shift. Um, I appreciate you putting up with the music that I have been using with kids in the morning, whether it be at the bus or whether it be at the front door. I think that's an important way to help set the tone for them and their mind to begin the day with a positive mindset. And as we know, music can heal and music can calm, and we want them to feel comfortable and confident when they come into the building. So I appreciate that, even if it's Christmas music in November. Uh, so we'll get some of you Grinches out there on the Christmas board eventually, but I appreciate you tolerating that and being very positive about that and encouraging that. I want you to remember, love our kids. So many of them need that. They're not getting the hugs. They're not told I love you. It took me several years before I was comfortable telling kids in the building that I would be in that I love you. And I'm comfortable hearing that. I'm comfortable saying that to our kids. And sometimes we might be the only person to say that to them. So I encourage you, let them know with a hug, hey, I'm glad you're here and I love you. And we're going to do great things together. Um, I am looking at the possibility of installing an alternative classroom in our building. I want to update you on that. Just a thought at this point. Uh, doing a little bit of research on that. Checked out some things within our community of some other schools who have done that. Um, and I think they're seeing some real positive results. I think there's a need because I think as we look at attendance and we have that attendance push to get kids in school, but we also have the need to sometimes remove them and give them some time to reset from the classroom. I think you as teachers need to have that support to where I've done all I can do. I need some help and sometimes that help can be give me some time where that child has another location to receive academic support. So what I'm looking at exploring is an alternative classroom setting to where the child receives the academic support specifically third, fourth, and fifth, but there are kids who can benefit maybe at a younger grade level where they get the reading and math support so they can still be prepared to take an SOL test, but at a longer period of time. Instead of doing an ISS or OSS at five or three days, looking at an alternative setting where we might look at five or ten days in an alternative classroom within our building where they receive the academic support, some emotional behavioral support, and we can also include some behavioral therapist support with that as well. Um, that would keep us from suspending them from school for multiple days to where we put them back in a similar environment that sometimes is causing the issues that we're seeing from kids. So that would keep them from going home. That would also keep them here receiving academic support. So stay tuned for that information because that goes along with some of the things we're dealing with and seeing with ACEs and the trauma. Also, uh, I was in a meeting this morning, several of our staff members as well, several people from our community um, on the neonatal abstinence syndrome. So we're meeting with Brianne Hubbard. I know she's taken a job with community health and had other health groups in there as well as Mandy and, and Brittany and I were in there. So we're looking at developing a, a large group of folks that 
offer so many different services and begin to network so that we know, and we're not duplicating services, but that each of us who are dealing with our children know who else could be involved and who else we could refer to. And I think what we're missing here, really within this area of the state, is a coming together of agencies and groups to where we get to know one another and know that we have similar kids that we're working with and dealing with all at the same time. So hopefully from this meeting today of about 10 people, we can look about 50 or 60 people the next time we meet as a large group to where we can contact and connect with people to where we can really see how we can help kids in a different way. And I think it's about not each of us helping from different pockets, but it's all of us connecting and saying, hey, we have in common this one particular family, this one particular child. How can we each know more information about that child? I, I saw that as an example today when I called a doctor's office on a child, uh, a fifth grader, absent from school a lot, received a note, nurse calls and shares information. I returned the phone call and talked to them about the child. So it was good rather than just seeing something on a piece of paper. Now we both have the same information. They know how we see the absences with the child. I know how they have been in the doctor's office four times in the last 12 days. They're frustrated. We're frustrated. But at least together we are sharing the same information. So that was good communication. Sometimes it just means picking up the phone call, uh, picking up the phone and making that call to share additional information. Um, please continue to talk zone still with your kids. Spend five minutes in the morning, ten minutes in the morning, whatever it might be. I heard a great story this past week. Student was acting as though they weren't ready to participate. The teacher walks up to them and says, "Are you are you in a, are you in red?" And the student looked at them in a shocked way and says, "And the teacher says, how about you come over here and bounce on this ball for a little bit? Would you like to do that?" And the student didn't say anything and nodded and went over and bounced. After five minutes, the teacher came back over and checked on him and says, "Okay, where are you at now? Are you at green?" And the student says. No. Are you yellow? We at least made some progress. So the great part about that story was the teacher knew enough to say, hey, where are you emotionally? And the student knew enough about our zones of regulation to be able to say where they were. And so that was a great job, and, and I wanted to share that story with you as well. Um, four days from now, our city council will vote on whether we're going to be building a new elementary school next door. So stay tuned for that. I hope we have three out of those five folks on the city council who will choose to support our children because we are in desperate need of support for our kids and I think that would be the first step certainly in the right direction. Um, I'll be out on Monday and Tuesday but to celebrate my absence you can wear your jeans to school on Monday and Tuesday so uh, enjoy those two days while I'm gone but feel free to email me or text me I'll be glad to respond to those. Happy Thanksgiving um, I am thankful for our staff I can't imagine being in a job where I enjoy what I do. Sometimes, as you know, it's more frustrating in the job that you do, but it also could be more rewarding than anything we've ever done. I know you're working hard. I know you're putting more effort into your job now than you've ever done before. I know you're more frustrated and you're more tired and you're exhausted. Focus on those folks at your home and in your personal life who you love because if you focus on them during your time off, and put this other stuff aside, you will be more rejuvenated. Let them know that they're more important than any child you work with every day. They need to know in their lives that they mean more to you than the children in this building. And it's important for them to know that, and it's important for you to remember that. My family is more important than anybody else that I interact with. And they need to know that they come first above the other things in my life. And that helps them, and that helps me be reminded of that. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, we do have, following Thanksgiving, we have Family Cafe right here at our school. So we have Vicey and David coming in at 1.30 on the 27th of November to talk to parents and grandparents about positive discipline strategies. So it's a cafe being held in our Van Pelt Cafe at 1.30 on the 27th. So we'll be inviting some parents and some grandparents in to find out more about positive discipline strategies that they can use at home. So we're anxious to see how they can use that within our school, within our school community, to impact more of our kids and their lives on an everyday basis. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, listening, and I appreciate your hard work and your support every single day. Stay positive. Stay positive because there's too much thing, too many things in our life to bring us down. 
find positive people, find positive things, events that are positive for you, and remain in a good place emotionally for yourself, your family, and your friends and our kids here at school. Thank you guys.